Shet. Today, y'all, we're going to share with you the mystery behind your purpose, behind your calling, and to be able to help you understand what you need to do to get that door open. I want you to remind yourself who holds the key to your door. God is going to open a better door than the one you actually prayed for. So I don't ever want you to lose faith. Just when you feel like giving up, just when you think it's over, God can send you a miracle. He's about to open doors that you didn't even knock on, like you didn't even knock, knock, knock on. Doors are opening that you thought were permanently shut and you thought it was a punishment. But guess what? It is preparation for what you are about to do and what he's about to do in your life. When you open that door, you will find the mystery behind your purpose, behind your calling. The scripture says God opens doors that no man can shut and he shuts doors that no man can open. He is your doorkeeper. Other people cannot keep you from your purpose. They can't keep you from your calling, y'all. Obstacles cannot keep you from building a kingdom business that God has anointed you to build. So operating a business from your life purpose should be one of your ultimate goals. If you're a kingdom business owner, if you're, if you're a citizen of the kingdom and you have been called to entrepreneurship, then that definitely should be one of your goals. But let me warn you, it will be one of the hardest things that you will ever have to achieve. I've been at this for 27 years and there's days still to this day that I'm like, wow, like, do you wanna keep going? But let me tell you, you will find so much strength, so much peace in God. And that's why I love sharing this with biblical principles. See, we all want to be successful in our lives, in our business, and we want to make a difference here on planet Earth while we're here for this short period of time. Sometimes, unfortunately, some of you are stuck in dead end jobs or you're chasing after a seemingly impossible dream that deep in your soul that you feel will never come true. It may seem like that that door is shut and there's no way out of the Rat, ways, rat race and that nine to five hamster wheel is spinning rapidly out of control. But what if I told you, what if I told you there is actually a way out of it? There's actually a way for you to get everything that God has called you to do. What if, what if I told you we've actually cracked the code to the mystery behind your purpose, behind your calling. So you're gonna to discover tonight how to get the key to unlock that door that no person can shut. And But guess what? I got some news for you. No person can shut that door. And but, but, there's a big but, right? You, you're the only one who can shut that door. And I'm gonna help you tonight to open that door and not shut it. And it won't be long before we reveal the mystery and it'll unravel as we go through this series and we come together. We're coming to you tonight from Revelation 3, 8. It says, I know your works. Behold, I have set before you an open door, which no one is able to shut. I know that you have but little power and yet, and yet y'all, you have kept my word and have not denied my name. Our purpose here is to help you build a business for the kingdom using biblical principles, because what if you could build a six, seven, eight plus bigger business around your gift, your skill, your expertise, your experience, and use those resources to help grow the kingdom. I want to thank you for joining us tonight for another irresistible message from our Kingdom Business Workshop share series provided to you by Bible Business Academy. You can go to BibleBusinessAcademy.com to learn more about our global organization. I am your host, y'all. Kathy McReynolds, our goal is to help you build a business so you can get time freedom, debt freedom, and financial freedom. We transform entrepreneurs into kingdom leaders with the sole purpose of growing the kingdom and fulfilling God's original purpose. We believe that this message will equip you to grow in your faith and your finances while advancing your life and business as you discover your purpose and pursue it with 
absolute passion. Y'all ready to get this started? Before we dive in, I wanna just remind you to stick around to the end. We're gonna give you exclusive access to building a business with biblical principles. I'm also gonna show you how you can get a gift. You see that box behind me sent to your front door and why it will help you to grow in your faith and finances, which leads to more fun, more freedom and more fulfillment. If this is your first time tuning in, you might be thinking, who is this lady and why do I want to listen to her? My name is Kathy McReynolds. I am from Akron, Ohio. I always joke and say I grew up shy, sheltered, and in church basically six days a week. My mom was a minister, dad, a football coach, left home at the tender age of 19, lived in the D.C. Baltimore, Boston, and Pittsburgh area. We got anybody from any of those areas? Let me know in the comments. And by the way, let me know in the comments, where are you from? What type of business you have? And don't forget to hit that share button so that we can help other people. I'm an author, international coach and trainer, an introvert who loves to win, not perfect you know, by any means necessary, but we do take action. Auntie, the mini licensed financial advisor. I've made six figures in plus in business and lost it as well. Our goal is to help shorten your learning curve and to be able to help you to do the same thing. Uh, you can pick up a copy of our book, Bible Business Secret. You can get that on Amazon, or if you want the digital version, you can also get it on Amazon or go to BibleBusinessAcademy.com forward slash book. And you can also get a copy of our planner, Believe and Grow Rich. You will absolutely love this. This is your 4 one planner, and that is available on Amazon, or you can get it at BelieveAndGrowRich.org. Guys, not only do we come here each Thursday to talk to you about how to build a business with biblical principles, but we also have resources to help you to be able to do that. So you can do that by uh, going to BibleBusinessAcademy.com, learn about the different classes that we have and our kingdom enterprise system and how it will help you. And more on that later, we got uh, memberships, we have academies and done for you programs. And we'll talk about that uh, towards the end. But tonight, y'all, I wanna talk to you about God opens doors that no man can shut and the mystery behind your purpose. And as I said, we're coming to you from Revelation 3 a.m. I'm gonna read that again. It says, I know your works. Behold, I have set before you an open door which no one is able to shed. I know that you have but little power and yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. So right there, just in that word, you can get a lesson there. It's just, we know you have little power and but you kept his word and you have not denied his name. So when you do that, all right, lesson number one, when you do that just from the title, lesson number one, he will open doors for you that no one can shut. See, we all face situations where it seems like the door is shut, where you're working hard, but not getting any good breaks. Anybody felt like that? Let me know in the comments. Put hashtag yes, yes, yes. Uh, th th that appointment that you had, no showed you that sale that you just knew was going to close, didn't close that loan that you wanted to get, didn't go through. You failed inspection and your very best person that you had quit or you can't even hire anyone for your business. See, the door seems to be shut. Thoughts will tell you the door is never going to open again. You're going to feel like you're locked out. You feel like you can't accomplish your dreams. You don't have the training that you need or understand the things that you need to understand in order to take it to that next level. You're running out of cash. Sometimes it's like a door has been slammed in your face face people walked away who you thought absolutely knew would be there for you friends betrayed you family betrayed you you came down with the illness i don't know what happened but somewhere along the way that door is locked and to you it feels like it is permanently locked but here's what the scripture says god will open doors that no man can shut God is your doorkeeper. He is in control of the doors in your life. You may be up against a door that seems locked, a door that has deadbolts on it. 
but he already gave you the key. So here's the question that I have for you. Are you gonna use that key? Are you going to open up that door? How do you respond when the doors don't open? When, when people say no to you, when, when, when that sale that you want, that you desire and you want, it doesn't come through. When people quit on you, when people lie to you, when nothing seems to go the way that you want it to go in business, when you can't get your business off in the ground, when no one is opting in and, and booking appointments with you, when you're not getting enough leads, how do you respond? How do you respond when that key won't turn? See, life it's a mysterious experience. You just got to know that. And business is a double, triple whammy of a mysterious experience. See, there are questions in life that we can never answer. There are questions in business that like in these 27 years, sometimes I like, I don't even know how we made it through that journey. There are things in life that we can never explain. There are things in life that you can never change. There are things in life we cannot stop from happening. And there are things in life that we cannot be responsible for. And there are things that we didn't cause and then it destroys us because we, we feel so responsible for that door not opening or that thing, okay, not happening. See, there's a lot of emotional upheaval and trauma when that key won't fit, when things don't turn out the way that you think that they're supposed to turn out. So I'm here today to tell you to stop trying to force that key to turn. Did he say in, in that scripture that you got to force it? Did he say that you got, you have to like make it open, kick it open, chase it open? No, no. He said, because you have kept the faith and because you didn't deny him and you just kept believing, he will open that door for you. See, tradition and religion and experience has taught us to be emotional when we face challenges, to pray in pity. Lord, why me? What happened to me? Lord, I did all of this, like all of that pity praying and, and, and that falling out, that loud wailing and yelling and anger and all of that stuff. Like, how do I know? Because I've been there before, right? take responsibility for another grown person's action we've done that as well like we feel responsible when someone else disappoints us or don't do what they say they were going to do or they didn't or or we couldn't help them like we wanted to help them then then we wear we carry all of that burden on us we become depressed we want to give up we want to say this doesn't work we want to say forget it we want to go back to being average and ordinary and forget about what god called us to do simply because something didn't go our way it's kind of like that two-year-old throwing that tantrum right see I want you to learn to settle some things so you can live and have peace. There are things in life and in business which will absolutely exceed us. All the money in the world can't fix it. You tried your best. And when you hit that point, here's an important, important thing that I want you to know. When you hit that point, let God be God. Like, like get to that point where you know that you can't exceed god's trust and all you can do is all you can do and all you can do is enough and that's when you have to be willing to let go and let god see who and what are you going to believe what you feel or what the bible said like what wh what is it how, how you gonna how you gonna run this plan right you're gonna believe what you feel inside of you your emotions or you're gonna believe what the word says james 1 2 through 4 said consider it nothing but joy my brothers and sister whenever you fall into various trials what did he just say consider it joy yes yes because he said be assured that the testing of your faith See, it's a test that you're going through, and it's the testing of your faith through experience produces endurance, leading to spiritual maturity and inner peace. So from now on, when you're going through something, your business isn't working the way you want it to go work, I want you to say this, yes, 
how can I, what do I need to do, God, to grow in spiritual maturity and inner peace and let endurance have its perfect result and do a thorough work so that you may be perfect and completely developed. So who wants to be completely developed? Do you like, let, let me know out there. Do you want to be completely developed? Let me know that in the comments in your faith and absolutely lacking at nothing. If you do, you got to let that thorough work of that test that you're going through to trying to get that door open, think you have control of that key and that you can open it without doing the things that God told you to do. So if you're ready to lack in nothing, I want you to pay attention. If you don't have a pen and paper, grab a pen and paper. If you're catching this during the replay, hit pause right here and, and go get it or tell somebody in your house to go grab it or get up and get it so you can take these notes or hit that screenshot button. See, are you going to believe what you see with your eyes or what he said? It's not about what you see. In 1 Peter 5.10, he said, after you have suffered, suffered for a little while, okay? For how long? A little while. He said, after you have suffered. So you will. If you're building something, if you're if you're doing something that requires you to step out of your comfort zone, if you're doing something that God has called you to do, you're going to suffer for a little while. So when you have expectations of that suffering happening, you when you're in the midst of it, you can kind of look at it differently. You can start saying, okay, God, what do you need me to learn? What do you need me to grow? How do you need me to grow? What? Because I know what your word said. I, I'm not going to believe what I see. I'm going to believe what your word said. It says, after you have suffered for a little while, while the God of all grace who imparts his blessings and favor. What, what does he do? He imparts his blessings and favor who called you to his own eternal glory in Christ will himself complete, confirm, strengthen, and establish you, making you what you ought to be. I mean, like, dang, that's some good stuff. He's going to make you what you ought to be. But guess what? You got to suffer for a little while. You got to go through some stuff so that he, not you, can complete, confirm, strengthen, and establish you and make you what you ought to be. Uh, do you want to be made what you ought to be? Do you want to live in your purpose? Do you want to operate in your calling? Is that how you want to live life? See, I'll ask you again, who are you going to believe? The no you just got? from that client or that prospect or, or, or that vendor or that loan officer or, or someone in your family or the promise of overflow. See, in John 10, 10, it says the thief comes only in order to steal, kill, and destroy. Are you going to let him steal your dreams? Are you going to let him steal your calling? Are you going to let him destroy you? Are you going to get the victory? He said, I can came that they may have life and have it in abundance to the full till it what till it what till it overflows are you ready to have that overflow see that overflow y'all is on the other side of that door so are you going to unlock it with the key so what is the key matthew 6 33 said but first and most importantly seek aim at strive after aim at and strive after his kingdom and his righteousness his way of doing and being right did he say your way or his way okay i don't want to make sure it said his way of doing and being right the attitude and the character of god like do you have the attitude and character of God? I know I'm constantly challenging myself on that point. I was just talking to my mom about that today, how we, you know things can go out of our control and we allow our mouths, right? I'm, I'm guilty of that, to take us to places which, which is definitely not pleasing to God. So you got to ask yourself, would that be the character of God in that situation? How would he handle that? It says the attitude and character of God and all these things will be given to you also. And this is from the Amplified Version. As a matter of fact, everything we do here tonight is pretty much from the Amplified Version. So the key, the key 
the key to unlocking that door, y'all, the key to having a successful life, the key to having a successful business is number one. I don't ever want you to miss this. I don't want you to ever forget this. And I don't ever want you to think that is marketing, that is sales, that is people, that is the right product, that is any of that stuff. The number one key is to seek God first. Now you may say, well, Kathy, don't people who don't seek God have success? Absolutely. But what does he say about that? Who's it stored up for? Go do some reading on that. But guys, when you were chosen and when you made that decision to follow your calling, that means that your life is not like the world's life. You're completely separate from that. See, the kingdom of God is within you. So you need to find it. But first and more, most importantly, as you're searching for that, aim at it strive after it. And that's his kingdom and his righteousness. Today, we're going to dive into the kingdom and we're going to go into the righteousness um, next week. So make sure you tune in for that. See, let's talk about seek the kingdom first. Jesus, Jesus was once asked when the kingdom of God would come. You know, like, when is it coming? People still ask that question. Or as a matter of fact, most people don't even talk about the kingdom of God. Re religion has gotten so out of control and people have gotten so out of control in their own agenda. They don't even talk about the kingdom anymore. It, it, Jesus, when he was asked that question, the kingdom of God, Jesus replied, is not something people will be able to see and point to like so he said you can't see it and you can't point to it but then came these striking words it says neither shall thy say low here or low there or like is it over there is it over there for behold the kingdom of god is within you is within you like it is within you with these words jesus gave voice to a teaching that is universal and timeless it will never go away you can use that to 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 live life to build your business and to do any and everything See, people have given the kingdom so many different names, right? Plato refers it to it as the good and the beautiful, Aristotle as being, um, Plantis as the infinite, St. Barnabas uh, um, of Clarkville as the word, Ralph Waldo Emerson as the oversoul, and, and Tizem is called the Tile Judaism in Sof, Australian. Um, uh, Aboriginals is called the dream time tribes of South Southern Africa call it the Huna Ubatana. The names may be different, y'all. They may try to call it anything that they can think of. They can come up with some names that we haven't in, even heard of, the intergalactic, whatever they choose to call it. But the inner reality that they point to is all one in the same. It is all one in the same. See, the kingdom is an inner experience. In every case, it's understood that this inner trans trans transfection be transformed, right? Reality can be directly experienced. You can experience this experience has been called different things. People could call it yoga in the Indian tradition, Buddhism, in Buddhism, they call it a nirvana in Islam is it's called fauna in Christianity. It's a spiritual message. It is a universal teaching based on a universal reality and a universal experience. So I don't want you to get caught up and what people start to call it or what people say it is i want you to get in the word and then go do your your research and, and your and search the hebrew of how they said words and what the words mean because so many things have changed over the time if you guys follow me you know that i'm always looking that up and sharing you know the different sayings and some words that we use today don't even mean what they meant back then so you get all all confused in that. See, over the past 20 centuries, leading Christian figures have written extensively of this inner kingdom of God and their personal experience with it. And so I thought in order to help you see what other people have experienced after the word was written, then I, and we're going to share some of that with you. And listen, if you've had your own experience, we want you to share that with us inside of the comments as well and, and i can tell you for myself it's like 
it's like like I can't even explain how you feel when you know that that peace and that and God is within you and you just you just know that no matter what everything's going to be okay and it's like I don't know sometimes you get this rush like this love uh, uh, you know even better than when you had that crush on somebody and they walk by you and your heart started to pound it you get that feeling inside of you I don't know what it is for you and as I show you these uh, figures in the past you can see it's been different for each person so it's a personal experience so don't let someone else's experience stop you from thinking that what you're feeling and what you're experiencing and, and, and the God within you is not real because it's not someone else's experience. So let's start with St. Gregory of Nassau. Um, this is 335 through 394 in Turkey. It says Gregory uh, uh, of Nassau, an early Christian theologian, was one of the four great fathers of the Eastern Church and served as Bishop of Nassau and the center of the modern day Turkey. The soul leaves all surface appearance, not only those that can be grasped by the sense, but also those which the mind itself seems to see. And it keeps on going deeper until by the operation of the spirit, it penetrates the invisible and incomprehensible, and it is there that it sees God. The true vision and the true knowledge of what we seek consists precisely in not seeing it, it, like it, it is in not seeing it is awareness that our goal transcends all knowledge and guys i'm sharing these things from you from the tm vlog right so you can see that like it is this true vision and this true knowledge it it it, 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 it is like it's an awareness it transcends all knowledge you can't even when something transcends all knowledge it transcends all knowledge you can't even explain it it is unexplainable but you know it happened see saint augustine says that he regarded as one of the towering intellectual geniuses in history he wrote more than a thousand works on philosophy on uh, psychology theology history political theory and other subjects his confessions from which the following patches passages taken has re remained a popular and influential work for almost 1600 years he said i entered this is his his experience of the kingdom within he said i entered into the innermost part of myself i entered and i saw with my soul's eye such as it was an unchangeable light shining above this eye of my soul and above my mind he who knows the truth knows that light and he who knows that light knows eternity love knows it all oh, eternal truth and true love and beloved eternity and often i do this i find a delight in it like i i can relate to that you find a delight in it and whenever i can relax from my necessary duties i have recourse to this pleasure so right there he's telling you that in order to tap into the god within you got to be relaxed you in order to enjoy that experience you have to learn how to surrender he says i experience a state of feeling which is quite unlike anything to which i'm used to a kind of sweet delight which if i could only remain permanently in that state would be something not of this world not of this life and i'm telling you i i shared like a while ago and i read somewhere in the word I, I don't know the exact address to it but it said you know you, you you'll get that feeling and you'll be yearning for it to come back to you and you'll be yearning for you know asking god to just like be within you and and give you that feeling because it's so out of this world unlike anything that you've ever experienced it said but my sad weight weight makes me fall back again that's that's the weight of life that's the weight of the business that's the weight of the pressures that are on you so the more you can get that off of you the more you learn to let things and go and know that you don't have to jam that door to open it up that you don't have to kick on it to even if it's a dead boat on it to unlock it the more you will live in that realm and the more that god will dwell with you he said i am swallowed 
up by normal normality how many of you out there are swallowed up by normality how many of you out there are going through so much that is taking you away from what you were called to do is taking you away from that business that god put in you to get done we don't want that to happen and that's why we hear to help you out with that. Here's another example, St. Gregory the Great. He was born in an eminent Roman family and heir to a large fortune. Gregory decided to become a monk. And after he became Pope at the age of 50, he devoted himself to social cause. He was actually the first Pope especially known for doing so. He reformed the mass and introduced a ritual playing song known as the, the, the Gregorian chant. He was also a noted theologian. His book, Morals on Job, from which the following passage is taken, influenced religious thoughts for the century. It said the mind of the elect is frequently carried away into the sweetness of heavenly contemplation. Already it seems something of the innermost realities as it were through the mist. It feeds on the taste of the uncompassed light and being carried beyond self disdains to sink back again into self here we go again you get up here and then all of a sudden you sink back into self it says sometimes the soul is admitted to some unwanted sweetness of interior relish and it is suddenly in some way refreshed when breathed on by the glowing spirit remember what when jesus breathed on them and, and and he breathed the kingdom on them remember that this is what we're talking about y'all this is like jesus just breathed breathed it on them it wasn't like and something that they had to do it was something that he did he goes on to say when this is any way seen the mind is absorbed in a sort of rapturous security and carry it beyond itself as though the present life has ceased to be you get out of your way and you get let god in and let him have his way it is in a way remade in a certain newness it is refreshed in a manner by a kind of new being there the mind is besprinkled with the effusion of heavenly dew from an inexhaustible fountain and i love that the mind is besprinkled with the infusion of a heavenly dew from an inexhaustible fountain wow i hope you're getting something out of this i hope this is setting you aside and as you're listening in let me know in the comments what your experience has been uh jonas uh taylor was one of the most influential german spiritual writers of the 1300s martin luther honored taylor as a primary influence and, and taylor had exerted a profound influence on religious thought ever since. As one scholar remarked, Tyler Toller presents the Christian tradition in its purest form. The soul has a hidden abyss, untouched by time and space, which is far superior to anything that gives life and movement to the body. Into this noble and wondrous ground, this secret realm, there descends that bliss of which he has spoken. Here the soul has internal abdul. Here man becomes so still and essential, so single-minded and withdrawn, so raised up in purity and more and more removed from all things. Man, like, are you hearing this? This state of the soul cannot be compared to what it has been before. For now, it is granted to the share in the divine life itself. And Saint Teresa, Teresa, Mother Teresa was one of the greatest women of the Roman Catholic Church. Her books are considered masterpieces. Saint Teresa initiated the Carmelite reform, which restored the original contemplative character of the Carmelite order. In 1970, she was the doctor of the church, one of just 33 individuals and the first woman to be so honored by the Catholic Church. She says, my soul at once became, becomes regulated and I enter the state of quiet 
or that of rapture so that I can use none of my faculties and senses. Did you hear that? She said, I don't want to use any of my faculty and senses. Everything is still and the soul is left in a state of great quiet and deep satisfaction. From this regulation, there sometimes springs an interior peace and quietude, which is full of happiness, for the soul is in such a state that it thinks there is nothing that it lacks. So if you're feeling lack, this should be an urge for you to seek the kingdom so that you feel absolutely no lack whatsoever. Even speaking, by which I mean vocal prayer and meditation wearies it, it would like to do nothing but love. This condition lasts for some time and it may even last for long periods. So guys, are you getting this? Are you hearing this? Are you seeing this? It's different and everyone's explaining it different. So what you're feeling and how you're being used is especially for you. It's just like your thumbprint. It is different. It's all the same, but it's all different. Just like we're all humans, but we're all different. Thomas Merton, it says, after completing a master's degree in English at Columbus University in New York, Merton entered the, the Abbey of Our Lady of Geshiva in Kentucky as a monk. He was later ordained as a priest. He published more than 15 books on spiritual writings, poetry, fictions, and essays, and participated in movements for social social justice and peace. He took great interest in the religions of the East, particularly Zen, for the light they shed on the depth of human consciousness. For the seclusion of the monastery, he exerted a worldwide influence. In the following passage, Merton describes the experience of contemplation. He uses the term not in the current sense, thinking intently about something, but in his older sense, sense to describe the experience of transcending thoughts. The utter simplicity and obviousness of the infused light which contemplation pours into our soul suddenly awakens us to a new level of awareness. Who out there is ready to go to a new level of awareness, a level that you didn't even know, that you couldn't even imagine that existed? That's what seeking the kingdom first brings to you. It says we enter a region which we have never even suspected and yet in this new world which seems familiar and obvious the old world of our senses is now one that seems to a strange remote and unbelievable a door opens in the center of our being yeah yeah y'all see where that door is at right that door opens in the center of our beings and we seem to fall through it into immense depths immense depths which although are infinite are all accessible to us. Like everything is accessible to all of us. All eternity seems to have become ours in this one placid and breathless contact. You feel as if you were at last fully born. You're like, oh, yes, yes, like just yes, you're excited about it. So guys, your purpose, your gift, your calling, your life, it all lies by seeking and finding the kingdom within. They all found it. They all called it something different. They all did what they did and they all lived out their life purpose. This is the point that I want you to get from that. Are you going to do the same thing? Are you going to live in that space? Are you going to seek God with everything that you have? Are you willing to seek God first and find the gift within to tap in and let him do what he does and let God be God? Are you willing to seek God first and find that gift within? Jesus 
use business owners and people of influence to get the message out into the world. So you as a kingdom entrepreneur, as someone who is either started a business or wanting to start a business, you can also be used. We can be used. I always tell you guys, this was not something that I remotely wanted to do or even thought that I would be doing. And it came to me a, a year or so ago and I resisted and I resisted and I resisted. And then eventually I'm like, okay. And then when I look back over my life, I can see the preparation for this moment. I can see the growth that is happening as we're doing this. So whatever your profession is, whatever it is, it, it, I want to help you to be able to take that, that gift, that purpose, that thing that is within you and take it to a whole new level so that you can live out your gift, so that you can live out your purpose and you can do and become what God called you to do. So I'm gonna share with you some of the professions that were in the Bible, because it doesn't matter where you're at, but he will use who he wants to use. And if you're watching this, then you are probably one of those ones that have been chosen. So I thought, you know what? Let's use Jesus example. Let's look at the disciples that he chose to use. Let's look at their occupation, their profession, and what they did. Because see, some of you might be ditch diggers. And you're thinking, I'm not qualified to start a new business or to do something different or to, 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 to you know, coach or train or help people. It doesn't matter what you were doing before. It's a matter of what you want to do now. And the first thing and the most important thing that you need to do is seek God first. So he used fishermen. Andrew, Peter, James, and John, the sons of, of Zebedee, worked as fish, fishermen. And Matthew 4, 18 through 22, relates that Andrew and Peter were fishing, plying their trade when called. And James and John were mending nets when, with their father. The Bible states that these two men weren't just fishermen, but business owners along with their father, for they employed others in the business. Thomas, Nathaniel, and Philip may also have worked as fishermen, for they were all together in fishing when Jesus appeared to them in John 21, 2 to 8, following his resurrection. So what, what are you doing? When he appeared to you, when that thought came to you, when that in, when the God with in you came to you and said, here's what I'm calling you to do. Here's your purpose for life. Here's, here's where you're gifted at. Here's how I need you to carry it out. You heard it. You heard that call. I can never tell you what that is. It's something that you hear, you heard, it's for you. And inside of you, it just, when you hear this, it, you, it just comes out and you're like, yes, you know what? I didn't know that's what it was, but this is what it is is on youtube if you go and um to our youtube channel and make sure you subscribe when you get there it's um kathy mcreynolds bible business academy it, the very first video short 12 minute video says god calling me to start a business so whether you're in business or you're looking at getting a business start go take 12 minutes and go go listen to that and it'll give you signs that you can look for so that you can recognize that yes it is him calling you and not your inner flesh you're stepping away from that and and, and it's drawing you into what he wants you to do and then guys go get in the word don't don't take my word for it not what I say to you, not what someone else say, says to you, but what the word of God says to you. And you got to study for yourself to show yourself approved. He also used tax collectors. Matthew called Levi and Luke worked as a tax collector for the Roman government. He would have acquired some education in order to do this. So some of you guys who have education, some of you guys are still paying for that education in order to achieve a job or have security. You thought that that education was your ticket out the key to you open up, uh, up that door and achieving high success his job provided him with a considerable wealth because tax collectors earned a portion of what they collected as noted in the story of, of Zacchaeus, another famous tax collector who followed jesus see matthew invited jesus home and he threw a party 
that included many of his sinful friends. And so people will tell you, you like, you can't be around, around sinners. You can't be around this and do God's work. You can't do this. Like it ain't on us to judge. Like in the beginning in Genesis, go back there. God gave us dominion, but he listed the things he gave us dominion over. And guess what? None of that was people. None of it was people. We spend so much time, me included, being guilty of that in the past of trying to judge or change or tell people what they need to do. No, that is not. He did give us dominion. It is him who comes into us, who speaks in us, who will tell us when we seek him exactly what to do. He said, my sheep know my voice. We will know when he's speaking to us. We will know that Matthew's wealth may have helped him fund Jesus' ministry. When you create your wealth, y'all, when, I didn't say if, when you create it, are you going to use it to do the right thing? Are you going to use it to grow the kingdom? Are you going to use it to further? Like in the beginning, that should be your goal. That's one of the first things that we teach you when you come into our programs and you learn how to build a business online, or you learn how to get more leads, or you learn how to build a business offline, which wherever you're at, or if we're doing it all for you, we're going to teach you those principles of money management and what to do with it so you can get out of self and into you. That's one of the advantages of working with us. As I've been a licensed financial advisor for 27 years, I think it's a long time now, right? And those are some of the principles I was just sharing with my nieces and, 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 and nephews. Uh, just, you know, some of them, follow these principles you're young you guys are in your 20s if you follow these principles 20 years from now you can become cash millionaires or even quicker especially in today's world but you're doing it not for selfish gain not for self gain and stuff gain even though you're going to have some of those things you're you're going to acquire some of those things you're going to live a great life but it's in the beginning when you know and understand that that's not what it's all about you you can get there a lot quicker trust me i've been through that of not understanding and chasing after money you look at you look at the israelites when they 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 mumbled and grumbled that's you know my mom and i were talking about that today that was one of the reasons why they didn't get their promise. Maybe that's one of the reasons why that door, you can't open the key. You can't use that key to open that door that's right there for you. And only two, only two of them went in. Like if you're looking at the journey that they took, if you're doing it by plane, it's about a 20, 30 minute plane ride. If, if, if you're going from from you know in, right there in that region from where they're i think it's cairo to egypt where they work it's a 20 minute plane ride it's a 24 hour drive or bus ride it's a 40 day or 30 day walk like think about that but for 40 years because of their unbelief they're losing faith if they're mumbling and grumbling, they were kept away. They were not able to open up that door. So when I said to you in the beginning that you can have it all and God will give you miracles and he will open doors that no man can shut, there is a but to that, right? And that but to that is that you do what he told you to do because he told the Israelites that they will have have it but he said because of your mumbling and grumbling and even moses didn't even get to get it right he a great leader of all of these times i sometimes say god like don't let me wander aimlessly around work with me do whatever it takes i humbly submit myself to you so that I can experience what you want us to experience as a kingdom citizen right here your original intent and that's what we want to help you do together y'all we can make this happen we all need each other reminders in order to make this happen it, there was also a zealot simon was known as the zealot not strictly a profession and as a canite zealots engage in political and anarchy attempting to overthrow the roman government when i was putting this down I, i'll never forget the moment when i was 19 and i was leaving home and my dad who had been at his company at that time i think for almost over 30 years like he literally it was probably over 30 years but i remember him standing there with the 
tear in his eyes saying, baby, I have given my life to a company. He said over 40 years. So at that time, it was probably over 40 years. He said, I want you to promise me something. He said, I want you to promise me that you'll never give your life to any company for 40 years. He said, I want you to figure out a way to become an entrepreneur and own your own business or get into politics. And as I look at this and I'm showing you examples of entrepreneur and politics, he said, I could have done more, but, but I didn't. But there are certain things that I've done that has set you all up. And I tell you guys all the time, he's now has left an inheritance to five generations of Mick Reynolds and, 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 and their, their children's children's children, right? His children's children's children, just by some of those disciplines that he implemented and he taught us that we didn't always follow that now i'm trying to share with you all that i'm sharing with my nieces and nephews that if we follow certain laws and certain rules see success is predictable and so also is failure if there's certain things that you need to do in order to make success happen and it doesn't matter who you are where you came from what education you have what experience you have as long as you make a commitment to follow those rules seek god versus rule number one right things will work out for you because that's the way god set it up see when he he had he was this politician or revolutionary when he joined jesus he remained zealous so that's what's in you you can remain that way but with an allegiance to jesus rather than um, political revelation when you are fired up about something the, all you're doing once you do it for god you just take that and you start using it i think about being in financial services i was fired up about helping people become debt free and financially independent helping them understand that the insurance industry was out to to do them wrong so because of what they had did with my dad i wanted to educate people i wanted to make sure people knew about that and that's the same zeal that i feel here in this task that he has assigned me with that i want to share i want to be able to teach i want to be able to help i want to share people with that zeal and that enthusiasm of, of how no matter where you're at you can build a business there's just certain things that you need to do in order to make that happen what is it for you where are you at what is he calling you to do he also used a thief right Judas served as the treasure in Jesus band and John 12 4 6 identifies him as a thief and an embezzler the Bible doesn't tell us what he did prior to becoming an apostle each of the gospels identified him as the one who betrayed Jesus Matthew gospel Matthew 27 3 uh, three through 10 notes that Judas suffered remorse over his betrayal and hung himself after he tried to give the money back to the highest priest. So even after, even after he said he felt remorse, right? That's part of what you got to feel and what you got to understand and what you got to do. See, and they took that money and they used those 30 pieces of silver to buy a burial site for the poor. So no matter where you've been, maybe you've been that person out there selling drugs, stealing things, doing things you ain't had no business doing, and now you're ready. So you don't, you don't have to, you just have some remorse and just surrender yourself to God and you can change your life. You can get a legitimate business. You can do something great. Don't let your past hold you back for what God has for you and your role and your mission in life. You can change that. If you can make money out in the streets, you can definitely make money legally because you have that courage. You have, you have things that people that it's hard to teach people to get you already have that that boldness that courage and all of that you can take it and you can turn it around today you you can stop if you're watching this if you're listening to this or if you know someone you can let them know you can stop today you can ask for forgiveness and you can know that god will will, will, will turn it around for you immediately and he will let it go and we want you to let it go as well the other apostles the bible provides no information on their professions of philip bartholomew thomas um, Thaddeus, or james the son of alpha 
Ephesus. It does provide information about Paul, who became an apostle after the death and resurrection of Jesus. He was a Pharisee and might have taught religion or worked in a political office. During his uh, missionary journey, Paul supported himself as a tent maker, according to Acts 18.13. So maybe you didn't have any business experience maybe you didn't have any political experience maybe you don't have any college maybe you didn't do any of that stuff it doesn't matter it doesn't matter where you're at if you're willing to seek him and let him open it up for you let him find that gift within you if you find and find that gift within you and listen to him get in that state of being quiet and still and listening it will change your life so i'm asking you what about you what is your purpose what is your calling will you live out your life's calling or will you wonder and be like so many unfortunately in the grave and on their tombstone it never says that they did anything great or or they can make you, you know when you get to heaven you, you don't hear those words well done my good and faithful servant you fought the good fight you kept going you believe you didn't give up you suffered for a little while but you never lost faith in me will you use the key that number one key that I just shared with you to open the door that no man can shut. Will you let God use you to do his purpose and to do his will? What about you? Are you going to do that? Will you seek the kingdom of God first? What about you? How will you answer that? Let me know in the comments. Will you do that? So guys, I hope tonight has brought you some value and I want you know I want you to join us next week as we continue in this series and we go into part 2 of God opens doors that no man can shut and the mystery behind your purpose. We've been talking about purpose for over a month now, so go back and catch the other episodes if you have not seen those but make sure you join us next week for part two and i don't want you to stop here y'all i want you to book a strategy call with myself you can do that at calendarly.com call kathy if anything we spoke about tonight resonated with you and you have that business inside of you uh, and that entrepreneurial spirit and you want to get it out and there's certain things that you want to learn how to do in, in terms of you know being in peace and, and, and getting that understanding and, and and knowing the systems and all of that stuff we have that set up for you in order to make that happen we develop an exclusive kingdom management enterprise system that is specifically for the citizens of the kingdom it's going to talk to you about the kingdom culture how to develop and build your team your personal development and also your business development and how to do that we leave absolutely nothing out you can do that by joining our memberships or our academies or our done for you program so you can go to biblebusinessacademy.com or doing business hours call us at 1833 bible biz or shoot us a text we will get back to you and if you want to have an in-depth in um conversation about that so that we can help you go to calendarly.com call Kathy or call us directly at 1-833-BIBLE-BIZ so we can hop on the phone with you and book that appointment. And if you're here right now, I just want you to know I am so proud of you. It takes courage to step out on faith and become who you were called to be. No matter what path you choose, no matter what path you've been on, I want you to know if you you come here and you follow us and you're with us and, and we can help you, we will not leave you behind. You can count on us 100%. Remember in the beginning when I told you we're going to ship you some things out and we want to give you a gift? Here, this is some of the stuff that we'll see. You see the box behind me there? You, you can get that with some stuff shipped out to you when you join one of our academies. So what questions do you have right now? What questions can we answer for you? Make sure you go ahead and drop, drop those in the comments. So whether we catch them um, during the live or replay, we will get those questions answered 
for you. And so guys, I just want you to know if you're ready to discover how to build a six, seven, eight plus bigger business for the kingdom, you have landed in the right place. And if you want to be able to use your gifts, your skills, your expertise, or your experience, and then turn around and take those resources, not for your own material gain, but for the kingdom, we want to show you how to do that. So make sure you call us or text us at one 833 bible biz If you love to email, I love emailing back and forth with some of you guys. You can do that at info at kathymcreynolds.com. And as I said, we have developed that exclusive kingdom management enterprise system specifically for that citizen of the kingdom. It's going to go over kingdom culture, which is so important for you to understand how to build the right team in order to make that dream happen, your personal development and also your business development and systems, everything that you need to succeed. And we do that through our memberships, our academy, or our done for you programs. And all of those we'll talk to you about, or you can learn more about them at BibleBusinessAcademy.com, or you can give us a call at 1 833 Bible Biz. So if you know that this is for you and you just got some questions and you just want to talk it out, go right now to Calendly, C A L E N D L Y dot com four slash call Kathy or call me at one eight three three Bible biz and book a free strategy session for 45 minutes or so. Sometimes they go longer. We're going to talk about where you're at, where you want to go. What do you feel that's holding you back? and the steps that you need to take even if we decide not to join each other because it's not a good match or other things are just not aligning up right now i promise you we're going to leave you with some tangible things that you can walk away and actually start implementing and doing right away but you got to be that person who seek God first and are willing to invest in yourself and in, in your skill, your knowledge, and, and so that you can become and do the things that God has called you to do. So if you got questions, go ahead now and leave those in the comment section. Let us know what they are. Whether you're catching it during the live or the replay, we will go in there, type those answers back out to you. I appreciate each and every one of you. And I want to thank you so much for coming out. Y'all have a blessed and wonderful day. And we look forward to seeing you next Thursday. And in the meantime and in between time, I will talk to you or text with you or email with you through one of the means that we just talked about. See you then. All right, y'all have a blessed and wonderful day. All righty. Bye-bye.